Hamlet, Nathan Mickles, and, and he is written in the first person, so he is introducing himself. <clears throat> oh, and by the way, my shirt says zombie proof. My wife got it for me. It has brains inside a circle with the cross through it because I have no brains, so the zombies aren't going to try to come to death. That's, that's the key. <clears throat> Hi, my name's Nathan Mickles. I guess I could tell you about the end of the world and being one of the last remaining humans on Earth or some of that apocalyptic crap. The truth is that the world hasn't changed much since it ended. Sure, the dead are walking and people are dying, but there's still money to be made. Take me, for instance. I specialize in a particular trade. You see, these living dead, they're not the brightest creatures. Any mother hoping that her little Annie was going to come back and sit at her knee had a rude awakening. Little Annie was much more likely to bite her and turn her into a zombie than give her a hug. Nevertheless, people found out that the dead are coming back to life and they just got to see. That's where I come in. It's my job to hunt down the living dead. Specific ones. If your Uncle Andrew died last year, you might hire me to find him and bring him to you. Of course, if you were smart, you already checked, the grave you already checked out the graveyard. You'd probably only come to me if you'd find a hole where your uncle should have been. So I would go and track down your uncle. But what good is he going to be to you as a grunting hulk of crap for brains? None, that's what. I have a unique talent that I get paid for. I'm kind of like what people used to think mediums were like. You know, they figured they could talk to the dead and all that crap. Well, I can talk to the dead. It takes some doing and some concentration, but leave me alone with the walker for a good six hours, and I can start getting something intelligible out of them. Mind you, it's not what you think, it's not what you think of as intelligible, but it's a language of sorts, some kind of guttural grunting and wheezing that resolves itself into meaning in my head. <clears throat> well, you don't believe me? Ask me anything. How old was Uncle Andrew when he lost his virginity? What did he really do to lose that sales job? Was he really just being friendly with his niece, niece that time you caught them together in the bedroom? Here's a hint. No. You gotta kill that bastard all over again. Anyway, that's me, the living dead medium. So I wanted to tell you about the time I had to find a particular brand of living dead. A woman named, Af a woman named Emily. One that this guy Mark apparently loved, but he never told her. There I was living in the biggest graveyard in the center of town. I'd found a tomb, not a grave, but a tomb, a place where this rich family had left the coffin of their beloved be benefactor. Well, when my life went to crap, I figured the safest place to be was smack in the middle of the graveyard. I mean, all the dead move like hell to get out of there. They'll never expect you to live there. So I found this tomb, tomb jimmied the door on it, and went in, axe in hand. Of course, I knew there was the benefactor to deal with. I hoped he hadn't come back yet, and I could just drag him out of the sarcophagus and leave him on the grass outside. But if he was already coming around, well, that's what the axe was for. The lid was heavier than crap, and I guess in retrospect, that's probably why he hadn't gotten out so far. I heaved that thing back, and it crashed to the floor like thunder to a lightning strike. I was so scared by the sound it made that I didn't look down in time to see the old benefactor himself, Charlie whatever you call him, wriggling around in there like a bunch of interconnected earthworms. In fact, I only actually realized he was there when his hand got a grip on my neck and started pulling my face closer to his mouth. I overreacted, I admit it. I screamed in such a high-pitched voice that it would have put my sister to shame. But luckily I had just enough fight or flight in me to fling that axe head around and bring the blade into the dead guy's wrist. I didn't cut his hand off or anything, but I left quite a gash, and the dude let go. I stepped back and brought that axe over my head and swung it down with all my, all my might. My lousy aim, so the blade actually came down on the pillow where the dead guy's head had been. Crap, I said. Arrrr, and the zombie said, or something like it. I brought that axe up over my head again and swung one, once more. This time the blade, blade landed solid in his forehead with a crack like a pinata being busted. The guy stopped moving immediately. It took me another half an hour to get the damn axe out of his head. The thing was stuck in there harder than a fly in amber. Finally I pulled it out, and I spent another hour or two dragging the body out of the sarcophagus across the floor and finally out the door. That was enough for one day. I came back every day the rest of the week to get the place outfitted just the way I wanted it. I got one of those hand crank radios, plenty of blankets, lots of bottled water and canned food, and a stack of corn mags. I figured that would do for starters. I set about to hunker down and live out the worst of the apocalypse in relative comfort. But then I met that damn kid. So, so as you can see, it's not exactly the most typical kind of horror. Um, I like to think there's a little bit of humor in it as well.